Oh, hey there, you got me. I am just making something fun to help us get our math facts memorized. So grab your things and then I'll show you what I'm doing here and we'll dive right in. I have on each card they're like little pom-poms um, and I wonder if you could help me make up a little story maybe we want to even think about um, the little poofs could be um, what do you think what do they look like to you little flowers we could say maybe little flowers maybe these are little flower beds and we could say that we had, how many um, beds do we have? One, two, three, four, five. The a farmer had five flower beds and there were how many flowers in each bed, do you see? That's right, there were eight flowers in each bed. So we had five beds and eight flowers in each bed. The eight flowers are happening five times how many do we have then all together? So some of you have five times eight memorized, which is wonderful. And others of you might want to remember that we can say five times four, which is half of eight, that equals 20. And now we can double that and it gives us five times eight equals 40, right? One of the reasons I wanted to make these for you today is just to inspire you to find some things at home at your house. When we're exploring these multiplication facts and trying to get them memorized, we want to have stuff we can touch and hold and you know, my little pom-poms here, I can count them and they're just also so cute. This would be really great to hang on the refrigerator or even just have a little game that I play with. I'm going to show you another way to think about this specific fact. So we'll slide these off to the side, but I hope I've inspired you to make some of your own. And we can take a look at it too. Actually, let's look at one more thing before I go on to the next. Having done this for so long, my mind works visually with these numbers. And I just wonder if it happened for you. I felt curious immediately. Well, when I turn it, how many are this way? Two, four, six, eight, ten. And how many rows of 10 do I have? One, two, three, four. So that's another fact, 10 times four. Have my to has my total here changed at all? It hasn't, the total is the same. It's still 40. So 10 times four equals the same things as five times eight. And you can see that, <laughs> Five is half of 10, and then again, four is half of eight. So they have that same relationship that we talked about the other day. So this is why I love for you to build it and make it and talk about it and show it, because you just begin to see things in a certain way, and you might remember that. You might hold on to that in your mind. But let's go back to thinking about five times eight. When we're working with number stories like you know, the farmer had five beds and there were eight flowers in each bed. How many flowers were there all together? We can make a manipulative for fun, but we can also use a model to help us think that through. So I'm going to draw one continuous bar that will represent my total, but um, I don't know what my total is, even though we do, because we figured it out. So I can think about the fact that there are five beds. Now when I have one continuous bar and I wanna break it up into a sections of five, I say to myself, outer, outer, inner, inner. And look at that, now we have five. One, two, three, four, five. Each one of these little squares can represent one of our beds and how many flowers in each bed? That would be eight. 
Now we can kind of um, pull back a little from the, from the uh, model and include some of the information that we know. What we know is that one unit or one bed <clears throat> equals eight. Then we can say, well, how many units do we have all together? We have five units. And five units equals eight times five. So that equals how many altogether? That's right, that gets us back to our number of 40. Now we didn't fill this in this way, but you could. And you could see that eight is happening five times. And in the end, you can come back to your model and fill in your answer, that's helpful. All right, let's go on to another one about strawberries. I hope I'm not making you too hungry, but we'll um, use strawberries for our next one. All righty, in this case, we have a packs of strawberries. How many packs do I have? That's right, we've got three packs of strawberries, and how many strawberries are in each pack? Can you see on your own to count them? That's right, I made them similar to our flower problem, didn't I? We had eight flowers in each bed, and we have eight strawberries in each pack. So we could just look at our multiplication fact to solve that, but to get in the practice of looking at number stories as a model and having representation, we can also think about what we know in that same way. I'm going to draw a continuous bar, and we're gonna say we have three packs of strawberries. So this was representing our strawberries, or maybe I could draw a strawberry here. <laughs> um, and then we, inside each pack, how many do we have? We have eight. And we want to know how many strawberries we have all together. Then again, we can say one unit. How about I just abbreviate unit to the letter U? One U equals eight. How many units or packs do I have? That's right, I have three units, and I want to know what they equal all together. So three units is eight times three. Why is it eight times three? Would you please tell your teacher at home why my three units would equal eight times three? That's good. I heard a lot of you say because there are eight strawberries in each pack and there are a total of three packs. That gives us eight times three. Now, all there is to do is solve it. Can you remember what eight times three equals? If not, you can do three times four, because four is half of eight, and three times four equals 12. From there, we would double it, and that gives us our answer here. So 12 plus 12, that's right. Eight times three equals 24. And we also could just count up the strawberries that we have in our pack. So we're using a concrete representation and then we're, we have a pictorial representation to help us get to our answer, but we also have a standard algorithm. Eight times four equals 12. Okay, we've got all three things in there. All right, let's do another. Alrighty, now we have a story. Let's read it together. A tailor used 21 meters of cloth to make dresses. She used three meters of cloth for each dress. How many dresses did she make? Let's try to visualize this with a model. Oh, you're right, I forgot to write our answer statement first. How many dresses did she make? Guess what, I'm gonna write it in cursive. She made, you can always write these at home too, blank dresses. There we go, okay. So we've got 21 meters of cloth, so let's start with that. It's a nice long bolt of cloth, and it's 21 meters all together, and what it is is cloth, okay? Each dress is going to be three meters of cloth, so we can show that information here. So let's do three meters 
is a dress. And what we want to know then is how many dresses all together. I can see why you might think that we could just divide this bar into three. However, we're trying to show how many dresses we get all together. And the truth is, in our bar, we don't actually know. All we do know is that each dress is using three meters of cloth. So what we can do instead is to say dot, dot, dot. And these, all the rest of these bars are dresses. Now in this case, the way we solve for that is just to go back to the algorithm. We have the 21 meters of cloth. We divide it, each one of these bits of cloth, into three meters. How many chunks of cloth will we have? Dot, dot, dot. 21 divided by three is, do you know it? <laughs> That's right. 21 divided by three is seven. So in the end, we could go back and show that there would be, um, you know, the bar would be divided in seven. But that step is actually not necessary because we've already gotten our answer, which is that there are seven dresses out of these chunks of fabric, okay? So this is why we want to carefully analyze our problems as we go. I've got another one for you. You're doing such a great job. I'm really proud of you. Hang in there. For this next story, you can see that Hedgy has been busy playing with some toys. Hedgy arranged 24 toys into four rows. One, two, three, four. How many toys were there in each row? I got our answer statement ready. There were blank in each row. Now, how can we approach this so that we can solve it? We've got 24 toys, all total. These are the toys. Now, you can see that we could solve it this way, and I'll refer to that in just a moment, but let's also give a try to the bar. The total of toys is 24. The rows are going to be four. So <laughs> they didn't look very even, but they should equal the same. So I've taken my total of 24 and I've made four um, little chunks, if you were. So what kind of a problem do you think I would be writing for this? What kind of equation? That's right, we took 24 and we divided it by four. Divided it into four rows or our bar into four chunks. And if you don't know what 24 divided by four is, we could count it up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice job, Hedgy. You did that just right. There are six toys in each row. If you wanted to put that in your model, it would go right there. And let me just quickly show you. If, you, if you're working with your model and it bothers you to have that be uneven like that, which I know some of you it does, we could cut our bar in half and cut each half in half. And that gives us a little bit more of an even model there. <laughs> there we go. You've got a few more of these to do on your own today. Keep practicing those math facts. Use your number bonds so you can think about your multiplication facts and your division facts in relationship to one another. I'll see you here next time. Mm -hmm.